Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian from the Air Force Association's annual conference and trade show at the Gaylord Resort in National Harbor, Maryland. And I'm honored to have with us uh, Lieutenant General Stephen Quast, who is the commander of Air University at Maxwell Air Force Base. Sir, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. This means a lot to me. Um, I, I wanted to start off, you know, when, when you took over uh, at Air University, you started looking at a transformation of, of the entire curriculum there. Bring us up to speed on some of the, you know, you know, why is that transformation necessary and what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, well, what, the, what happened there is the chief uh, recognized that as we move into this new world where it's more complicated than ever before, the complexities of the challenges are accelerating more rapidly than ever before, that the key to success in, in any kind of new environment like that is to get to the hearts and minds of your airmen and teach them those habits of mind that make them successful at creatively pr solving problems in that kind of environment, thinking critically about the strategic uh, implications of what they're doing. This is really at the foundation of adaptation and transformation. So how is that, um, so how is your curriculum changing in order to achieve that goal, which is a very big, very complicated one? Right, well we know that the human being learns by doing. And so what we're doing is transforming in such a way that people not only get to learn the knowledge in the book, but they get to do things, the research, to actually test their thinking and test their assumptions in a way that's real. By doing, you learn more rapidly. And this is the way to achieve a competitive advantage over any potential competition in the world. So from a curriculum standpoint, um, as an educator, what does that mean fundamentally? You know, because I can understand that from a military training standpoint, for example, right? You, you get good at flying by doing a lot of flying. Right. So what we do is we take uh, these wonderful warriors that come in straight from the battle space. And we have, in fact, more Navy and Army, Marine Corps, international officers, and interagency people in this university than we do even airmen. So it brings a beautiful tapestry of diversity of thought. We come together, we look at the problems of the world, things that are not going well or things that need to be fixed, and then we think about them. We think about the nature of the problem. What's really going on here? What are the underlying conditions? Then we war game them and we think through them. We do research and then we test them through strategy. And uh, this is the process of learning more rapidly by taking a problem, thinking more strategic about the nature of the problem, and then war gaming it to find solutions that actually work. Um, one of the things that you've been working on is expanding the partnerships between Air University as well as civilian um, universities and educational institutions. Um, why is that transformation an important one from your standpoint? Right. It goes back to the essence of diversity. When you have people that can look at a problem from many different lenses, you have fewer blind spots. So by having these wonderful networks with every university in America and, in fact, throughout the globe, you can take a problem, and with some of the technological tools, you can have an environment where the collaboration is quick, and every expert in the world gets to look at it. And you get feedback through the lens of culture, through the lens of technology, through the lens of human nature, through the lens of sociology. All of these views make the solution elegant and brilliant. Well, let me ask you about, you know, you mentioned about having the you know, Navy, Army, Marines, all at Air, Air University, as well as obviously a civilian component to it as well. But, w you know, each one of the military services also has similar sorts of challenges and similar charges by their service chiefs. Uh, you know, Admiral Richardson and, and General Milley, uh, as well as General Neller, are giving very, very similar guidance. As educational institutions, as the service's highest educational institution, how are you working with your sister services, educational systems, to swap and exchange great ideas you have, better ideas that they may have, so that you get to a better whole? This is one of the great questions of our time, the uh, balance of integrating our collective views in a way that still allows a group of people to dominate a certain domain, such as the air domain, or the land domain, or the sea and undersea domains, but yet collaborate together so that when you go into the strategic environment and you need to give the President and Congress options, that you can move between those domains quickly and rapidly. This is what we mean by multi-domain dominance, where America, like no other country in the world, uh, can work together with each of these different organizations that dominate their individual domain, but they integrate and weave together seamlessly so that you can outwit, outmaneuver, and outfox any potential competition. <laughs> that's uh, 
um, that 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 certainly is a is a is a very very um, uh, important uh, but you know very very challenging goal to try to achieve. Right. But let me ask you about cyber. Um, one of the things that educators have told me, um, uh, the the um, superintendent of the Naval Academy, uh, Slapshot Carter, mentioned that you know cyber is an important thing. That one of the things he's finding that it's it's a very important class to teach the midshipmen is 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 a basic sort of cyber course. Um, from a cyber education standpoint, at a higher level. Do we need to better integrate that into curriculums across the board so that everybody at every level has a better understanding of cyber, its challenges, but also its opportunities? Absolutely. It's really a manifestation of the fact that we have moved from an industrial age world to an information age world. And uh, s just as in the industrial age world, everybody had to learn how to use machinery. Now, in the information age world, everybody has to know how to work in the cyber realm, whether it's cyber hygiene, where you don't stick a thumb drive into a computer uh, unless you know where that thumb drive has been and where that computer has been, uh, to the higher end, where you think about the nature of security and the nature of cyber that cuts across civil liberty lines, sovereignty lines, and uh, privacy lines in a way nothing else does. The reality is cyber has infused into every part of our life and all of our machinery. And for us as human beings to be able to work well and still own what we must do, and that is the moral and ethical component of living life peacefully with other civilizations, it's going to require everybody to understand cyber. So that's why it's in all our curriculum now. This is why we stood up the Cyber College, which will go to work educating the force from the youngest to the alumni. And one last question. Um, as you but one of the things that General Welsh, in giving the charge to redo the education system, one of his other questions was whether or not airmen are too educated, that they have too much, they spend too much time at school, and none of the services spend as much time educating and giving higher degrees to whether it's for enlisted or as, as, as well as officers. Right. You know, as a consolidation, what are the keys to less school? but equal impact? Yeah, so uh, th this is a great question. And uh, let, me, let me describe it this way. In the industrial age model of education, where you have a stack of books and a desk and a platform instructor teaching you, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of money. You have to travel to the location, you have to sit down. In order to really get the face-to-face, -face, uh, human eye to human eye, critical thinking refined. What we are doing is we are chunking education is the, the term they use in uh, academia, but it allows you to have education on command, on demand, just in time for the job and skills you need as you go through your life. And what it does is it allows you to gain education in the moments of your life when it's most potent and useful to you to be more effective as a warfighter or a defender of our uh, national security. And it's done with people that still test you, but it's not in the classic classroom model of the 1930s. So it's really allowing us to have as much education as we need, but doing it in a way where it does not cost so much and it is not so time consuming. Sir, thanks very much for spending so much time with us. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Have a great Air Force Day. And happy birthday. Thank you very much.